You want me to go ahead and get started? Yeah, that's that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um. So this chapter talks about function documentation. I feel like it's um, easier than some of uh, the other chapters, at least for me. Um, here are the learning objectives. Describe the benefits of well-developed function documentation and also um, using the Roxygen 2 basics and then the definition of object documentation and then the documentation workflow and then some general formatting and style guidelines. So the first question the book talked about was, um, why do we care about documentation, object, object documentation? Um, some of the answers are in here. Um, it tells the users um, what the package is about, how to use it, some basic information. It also informs your future self and also um, some other contributors. Um, this chapter use um, the Roxygen 2 package to create documentation. So we don't have to type the, the instruction, the comments word by word. Some of the advantages of Roxygen 2 is um, the code and the documentation co-located. So they are in the same place. Um, it's easier to remember to update the documentation when you um, make some changes to the to the function. And then um, you can just use the markdown rather than learning the markup dot um, dot rd. Also, Roxygen two creates um, some of the function and the documentation structure automatically. And then it also allows you to um, share content across documentation topics and vignettes. Okay. So the first one, um, first um, thing we will be talking about is Roxygen 2 basics. Um, here are some of the main steps. I think that usually how you do it is you create the function first. And then after that, you go to above the function, you will have the comments, and then you run the dev tool um, document function, and then generate the the um, um, the dot rd file in the main manual folder. So here is an example. This is the function, the basic function of um, add at x and y so um, above that that's the comment and each of them start with a pound hashtag and then a single quote and then once you have the comment and the function ready you can run the dev tool document it will generate this piece um, something similar to this. It will say generated by Roxygen 2, do not edit by hand. And then, then it's going to be in the man manual folder as a .rd file. And then it also converts that into a PDF or HTML, HTML format. This is similar to what we will see in um, like our studio when you um, use a question mark to see what the function is about, um, something like this. And then Roxygen to comments, blocks, and tags. So as uh, what we have seen um, in here, each one, each comment start with the, the, the hashtag, single quote, no space in between. And then um, everything above the function, all the comments together are collectively known as a, um, a block, which is then broken up into um, sections by tags. And the book recommends, um, it's saying that uh, the first sentence is a title. So recommend to use a brief and um, succinct of, uh, word in in the at the very beginning so in, in the example here this it's gonna be the title remove duplicate strings 
And then the second paragraph is the description, a brief description of what the function does. And then paragraph three and above are for details, which are kind of optional. According to the book, details are optional, but all objects must have a title and a description. So those are required. And then here in the, um, after the second paragraph, we have a few tags, um, param, returns, examples, and export. We will talk about those in a little bit. Um, so all of them together is a block. And then this is a function. I believe this is from the string R package, this example. Um, so if you know general R markdown, um, the knowledge is good enough to use the Roxygen 2 package, but it also, the book also points out a few things, uh, four things actually. So the first is um, use backticks for inline code. Like the example in here, I like this function because it's great. It's using backticks to turn this text into code. And then square brackets for auto-linked function. Um, I think my understanding is um, when you add the brackets, square brackets, it will turn this into a link and the link will um, point you to the, um, the function documentation. And then also vignettes, you can call the vignettes. Um, it will also create a hyperlink. And then the last one is to use bullet lists. So when you have multiple things you want to list, um, using list is a nice way to um, separate them. Okay, and then title, description, details. Um, the title, uh, the first sentence, there are some recommendations. Um, it should be used sentence case and um, not in, end in a full stop, followed by a blank line and then succinct description of the function. Uh, according to the book, um, the string R, so those are some of the functions from the string R package. Um, those are like bad examples. And then here, those are from the tidyverse deployer package. Um, those are considered good um, titles. By looking at the examples, do you um, do we want to someone want to share why they think it's a good example or a bad example? We can talk about either the bad examples here or the good ones. Um, I'm actually not sure. Yeah, I wasn't sure either, but the book, um, later in the book, um, the author shared why. So, um, the first few examples, the bad examples are the str detect, str extract, str locate, str match. Um, it's saying, it's repeating some of the words in here. So pattern in a string, patterns from a string, patterns in a string, group patterns, uh, groups from a string. And also it's using the same word as the function. So it's not explaining, you. I think it, you should not be using the same word to explain what the function does. And versus good one, which is, um, clearly showing what it ha what will happen to columns, what will happen to rows, and then the word is a different. Create, modify, delete. It's not like mutate, mutate the columns or something like that. Yeah, I, I think this is saying this is bad is kind of a little bit of an overstatement. I would say not great. Bad would be something that clearly breaks, breaks this convention. That this is a verb doing something so if, if the function title is saying a function 
or like well if if this if this 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 were like um I don't know mm -hmm. lot of x against y right so this is it's it's it that doesn't follow the convention of verb describing what's going on so but yeah so I kind of I see that, that their point of putting out a, st a stringer <laughs> functions as, as not being really mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, Rebecca, do you have any thoughts? Um, yeah, I was with Trevin in that it was not obvious to me why these were bad initially. So I was mm -hmm. just going to the book. I, I hear your point about it being um, repetitive and uh, um, and the point that the the same verb is being used in the explanation is, is so I, I think that that's a good point that, you know, it doesn't say mutate columns. So mm -hmm. that you've got a few more words to um, help your brain get around what's going on, since you've got um, some variety in the explanation of what it's doing. So, yeah, thank you. Okay, and then description recommendation. Um, description should summarize the goal of the function in a single paragraph. Um, that's the recommended way. But if you do have more than one paragraph you will have to use the tag at description so that the following um, paragraphs do not turn into details. Remember, after description, we will have details. We have title, description, and then details, etc. And then details, it's um, not required. Most of the functions don't need this. Okay, and then next is arguments. Um, this is where you do most of the work. Um, the Roxygen 2 package allows you to use this tag param, which is short for parameters to um, insert functions. Um, you should use this to um, describe the inputs inputs of the function and what the parameter does, usually you can give a default argument. Then possible to list fixed sets of possible parameter values. Yeah, you can use uh, bulleted lists as well in here. And if there's more than one arguments, multiple arguments, you can do that by um, using a comma in the middle. Again, there's no space, like the example in here. And inheriting inheriting arguments. Um, sometimes in the same package, you will have similar or closely related functions. Um, the arguments might be same or very similar. So you don't have to copy and paste everything every time there is um, there are a few things you can do. So one of them is to use the inherit param function and then inherit, inherit params package and then the function. It has some of the examples in here. And then return values. Um, the slides is very the slide itself it's very brief in here just describes out, the output from the function um but i think according to the book the output is as important as inputs so in the book it's saying that um return when um when you have when you use the tag returns you have to describe at least the uh, the shape of the output, like if it is a, a vector or if it is a data frame, something something the user can expect. The okay, next one, example. Um, examples are important. Um, like it's um, the tips in here, most the users will look at the examples first. So um, when we add examples, we need to provide executable code on how to use the function in practice and the example should not throw any errors. Examples are executed in four of the situations below. 
interactively with example the function or use our command check on your computer or our command check background. And then the last one, pack, package down website building, I think is talking about uh, referring to like GitHub. And then the contents of the function, um, the contents of the example should be, um, should have some basic functionality about the function and some highlights, some easy to miss features and avoid um, edge cases. And then this part, um, sectioning is awkward. I think according to the book, it's saying that there's no way to um, to separate, to do, to section the examples. I think it's saying you can use the dotted line, use like a few, several hyphens together to create a dotted line to, to create sections. And then, when you want to use a data set in the example, it's recommended to use the built-in data sets. Um, the book um, talked about the one of the popular data set, the empty cars. And then errors. Um, if you go to here, um, it's saying the example must run without errors but the author did mention that if you sometimes do want to include errors as um, like just for teaching purposes to show people what the error looks like, there are two ways to do that. Rep code in the try parenthesis and then the do not run. And this is a recommended way, the first one. And dependencies and conditional conditional execution. Um, I don't quite understand this part, um, but I think it's saying that sometimes um, using external dependencies also creates errors. You will run into errors in the examples. And the best way to solve the problem is to attach that dependency by using the library function. Um, anyone wants to share their thoughts on this? Well, my understanding here is that um, in your examples may include the code that calls functions from other libraries. So that function if that library is out, is not installed or outdated, the example will produce an error when it's compiled on CRAN or on some other environments, and that's that's kind of bad. So that's that's the thinking here. And what they discuss in the book is that, um, well, on CRAN the expectation is that all packages are out there on CRAN, so that should not be happening unless you're using something really esoteric that's only exists on GitHub or if that's your private package or whatever. Um, and in that regard, that should be declared in the dependencies and it should kind of sort of should work. That's my read of that section. Okay. And what about this part, the cost of putting code inside the dot, dot, dots is high. What, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you put this into if condition, then the output is not visible. That's one of the th those things that drive me nuts about R, is that you have the for loops and those if statements, the output is suppressed and uh, you don't know what's going on. So you have to go into lengths of providing the print statements and this is just, well, that's, that's a strange design choice, if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm used to theta where that's that's a non-issue and that's one of my pains <laughs> converting to R is okay, well, why is it not showing any out? Oh, it's because because it's behind four. And that's mm -hmm. well that's 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 what they mean by that is that if you if you put this behind an if statement, uh, inside the if statement, then it means that <coughs> the desired output that you your example is supposed to show is not going to be visible. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Um, and the recommendation of, of for conditional cases is to use the tag example if tag. It has the machinery from um, users example code renders in package down and then doesn't break cram prohibition of putting codes in the don't run that part. I've never used this tag before. Usually when I look into a package, I, I check the examples, the at example tag. I have not, I don't think I've seen the examples if tag before. It won't, okay. The, the examples if won't show up to the end user. Um, it's, it's like it, in the documentation, it says only include this example if this condition is met. And so when the package is built, if the example is not available, or like if you don't have some package or if you, um, whatever, if, if you don't have a certain environment variable set, it won't show that. It won't build that part of the example. Okay. Okay, thanks, so. <laughs> And then um, intermixing examples and text. Um, so this part is saying, uh, I think in the book, it's saying that um, instead of using the package to, I mean, Roxygen to package um, to create examples, the alternative way is to use the R markdown. But there are some downsides. The first one is, I think it's backticks three and then R. Um, it blocks, this blocks, it's never run. So when you update something and when the block is not running, it's hard for you to see the problems, to see what went wrong or to update that description, uh, description, the documentation. And then the second one is running every time you, when you uh, change the document, documentation, which could be a bit painful. Okay, and then reuse um, documentation. We talked a little bit about this um, in the previous section, but I think it's saying that when your package has closely related functions, you don't have to um, copy and paste the the um, the documentation each time. So in are in the Roxygen 2 package, it allows you to use a few of the tags in here. Inherit source function, inherit section, source function, section title, and inherent dot params. This one allows you to inherit all supported components from another function. And this one is just inherit the single section uh, with title section. And then the last one is um, just the, the parameters, like the arguments. Um, and this one, child documents, um, check my notes. I don't remember. Um, yeah, you can reuse the same dot RMD or MD document in the function documentation. The syntax is um, r child equals to and then min rmd file and then the file name. Okay, I think the rest of them are for a previous version of the book. So I didn't pay attention to that. Um, yeah, I think that's... Um, that's what I have for this chapter. Any questions or thoughts or comments? Thanks for presenting. Yeah, no problem. I feel like yeah, this one's you. easier. I was an originally signed up. Um, I signed up the, I think, test basics. Yeah, but this one I feel like it's easier. <laughs> mm.
Rebecca, were you about to say something? No, just thank you. Just that's all I had for now. I'm trying to think if there are any questions. I don't think I have any questions. Uh, Stas says you can include LaTeX math formulas in function documentation. That's yeah, good. I saw that in the book too. I've never used the LaTeX before. It's um, It's been a while for me. Well, that's not what the book says. The book says that the syntax is vaguely resembling LaTeX in the sense that this is backslash direct figure brackets. <laughs> what I'm saying is that you can you can do dollar signs formulas uh, and they will be rendered into at least into HTML files. Oh. <clears throat> so it's like the same output then? Well, I mean, you, if, if you're writing some moderately complex statistical procedure and you need to explain in excruciating details what the formulas are if this is like this particular implementation of mixed models blah 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 or survival uh and you want to spell out your distribution functions and whatever statistical thing that your code is doing then you can just write latex formulas to explain that okay Cool. Any um, any other comments or questions? Um, I feel like it's perfectly fine if we end early. Cool. Um, next week we are off. I know some of us are eclipse chasing, so hopefully, um. Hopefully we all have clear skies next week. Um, then we'll be back uh, the week after that. So hopefully, and I think Rebecca is presenting um, for that for that day. Yeah, environments, I think. Wait, no, 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 vignettes, sorry. Okay. <laughs> that sounds right. So as long as you you know what it is. Yep. Mixing up book clubs. Yep. Sweet. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Thank you. See you in a couple weeks. Bye.